how I see financial independence today versus how I saw it just three short years ago is dramatically different. Hello everyone, my name is Zach and welcome to On Cashflow, where I help you become a master of your own cash flow. Now let's get started. The first major thing that I changed my mind about is I think now that it is okay to keep making money even if you say you're financially independent, even if you say you retired early. I used to think that financial independence meant that you never worked again, but now I know that isn't necessarily the case. It means that you don't have to work for money ever again. It means that you can now pursue work that you want to do. And I used to feel the same way about myself. I used to think that once I stopped working at a regular W2 job, I'd never want to work again, that I would never want to try to do anything that resembled work again. But boy, was I wrong. I personally have gone on to doing all kinds of different work from rental real estate investing to creating this YouTube channel and mostly because it's fun and I enjoy doing it. And who knows, I might get just a regular job again one day just to try out something new. The point being here is don't let the retirement police scare you. It's okay to keep working. It's okay to get a different job. It's okay to still earn money when you're financially independent and when you claim to be retired early. And by the way, speaking about financial independence, I have a whole nother video on how you can get started on the path to financial independence, but more on that video later. The next major thing that I changed my mind about when it comes to financial independence is buying more time. One of the most important aspects of achieving financial independence is gaining back more of your time if you choose to take some of that time back. Rather than having to spend eight hours plus an hour commute to work every single day, you can now take back that time and choose what you want to do with that new time. However, as we all know, there are things in life that we just have to do. Just, you know, small things of everyday life that are realities that are going to take up some of our time. But there does come a point where you can still continue to actually buy back some of that time as well. You can outsource, you can automate, you can find a machine to do something, you know, very similar. When I was first thinking about early retirement, I had the mindset that everything had to be DIY. You had to learn how to do everything yourself. But now I have realized that you can take some of your extra money that you have, you can use that to purchase more of your time by spending on goods and services that are going to save you time that allow you to take even more of your time and reallocate it to something you wanna do. Maybe instead of having to spend one hour a week doing this chore, you can instead take that extra hour and devote it to a hobby. You do that by buying more of your time, by outsourcing, by automating, and things like that. When I first retired, I thought that I had to do everything myself. For example, I was mowing my own lawn myself. You know, I was going to the grocery store and getting all my groceries by myself. But now I have chosen to buy back that time. Now I outsource my lawn care. Now I outsource by grocery deliveries instead of having to go to the grocery store. Now I outsource shopping by doing it you know, online and having it sent to me rather than having to go to the store. Now I outsource any kind of you know, preventative maintenance on my car, like oil changes and tires and all that kind of stuff. I choose to pay for that rather than commit my own time to doing that so I can take that time and spend it elsewhere. Similar to how financial independence is buying back the time that you would regularly have to spend working at a job, you can also take more of your money to buy back more of your time when it comes to things that you can outsource or things that you can automate. Now here's an even bigger one that I changed my mind about, and that is when it comes to your fire planning. See, I used to think that your fire plan had to be solid. Like you had to know pretty much everything that was gonna go on. You had to plan out your life for the next you know, 30, 40, 50 years. But I've come to realize that it's impossible to do that. It's impossible to plan for everything. It's impossible to get it right the first time. It's probably impossible to get it right the fifth time. And that's because life is not static. Life is very dynamic. Things are changing all the time. Your preferences are going to change all the time. Your interests are gonna change all the time. How you wanna approach your life, whether you want to be retired, whether you want to stop working, whether you want to start building a business or get a different job or whatever it may be, there are gonna be many things in your life that are going to change both along your journey to financial independence and once you become financially independent. But that's perfectly all right because you don't have to have it all figured out. Your financial independence plan doesn't have to be perfect. As long as you can be flexible, that is what it's all about. See, financial independence gives you that breathing room where you're not living paycheck to paycheck, where you have a significant amount of assets you know, to back you up, to back up your decisions so that you can make decisions that you feel are gonna be right for you in the future. And those decisions can change. What you think now is gonna be right for you might be different five years from now, 10 years from now. The point is you don't know how your life is going to go, whether from an external factor or from an internal factor. For example, one thing in my life is when I first became financially independent, I never dreamed that I would start getting into real estate investing. And now currently I have a house hack and I have two rental properties and I'm gonna be working on the next one soon. 
That is a dramatic difference from not having any kind of rental investments, you know, purely being a stock-based portfolio to now I have a relatively significant amount of assets that are in real estate. And I never thought this would happen, but it did happen. And that just goes to show that what you want to happen can change drastically in your life, even after you become financially independent. So you don't have to have your plan perfect from the get-go. Now, while this video is about things that I've changed my mind about, there's one thing that I still haven't changed my mind about, and that is hitting the like button on this video. If you're enjoying this video so far, please make sure you hit that like button. It really does help me out, and I would really appreciate that. Okay, but seriously, another big one that I changed my mind about is the actual importance of becoming Phi. I used to think that it was one of the most important things that you can accomplish in your life, but now I have drastically changed my mind on that. I still think that financial independence is important. I still think that a lot of people should strive to achieve it, but I have actually moved that down on the totem pole of importance. I think there are many, like way more things that are more important than achieving financial independence. And therefore, I wouldn't actually prioritize it you know above all else i definitely wouldn't put it in my top three there are much more important things to me than financial independence and of course all of these things do have to have some kind of balance you know you can't have you know 100 towards this and ignore everything else but things like you know friends and family and experiences and my health and things like that are much more important to me than financial independence in and of itself and of course you can balance all of those things you can have all of those things be important in your life but financial independence you know being number one on that list it's just not going to happen and it just shouldn't happen and that's at least how i see it today looking back at it i think that how i achieve financial independence might have been way too extreme i think i might have placed too much preference or too much priority on achieving it by maintaining a really high savings rate by foregoing lots of experiences by foregoing maybe time with family and time with friends because i was instead interested in making money or saving money and any kind of instance like that if i had to go back i would put more emphasis on those experiences those times with friends and family you know spending a little bit more money you know still maintaining a really good balance being on the path to financial independence but not so extreme so financial independence while i still think it is very important i don't think it is you know one of the most important things i would definitely place it outside of my top five now this leads me to the big question here i want to know from you in the comments below ever since you first found out about financial independence have your views changed on it have you changed your mind about anything please let me know in the comments below i'm really curious to hear what you have to say but i do have another really good one for you here and that is i changed my mind about financial independence equaling happiness i strongly believe that financial independence will not bring you happiness in and of itself i do strongly agree and do believe that financial independence can help you achieve a higher level of happiness because it can allow you to make choices. It can give you that breathing room in order to make yourself you know, happier and more fulfilled in your life. Automatically retiring early from work is not going to make you happy. I used to think that after I achieve financial independence, that my happiness level would just, you know, shoot up. Like, oh, well, I don't have to go to work anymore. Now I don't, I can do whatever I want with my time. And it's gonna be, you know, boom, it's gonna be off the charts. But that did not happen. And the reason why that did not happen is because just having that much time in your life is not going to make you happy. It's what you do with that extra time that can help you become happier and a more fulfilled person. If you've ever heard of this phrase, I truly believe it to be real, and that is hedonic adaptation. So basically you have a baseline level of happiness that you are usually going to hover around and you're going to have events in your life that are going to spike your happiness, but then you're going to come back, you know, close down to baseline, or you're going to have events in your life that are going to spike sadness, but then you're going to eventually return back to your baseline. I strongly believe that concept to be true because I think I've experienced it a lot in my own life. And so I have stopped believing that achieving financial independence will make you happy. Instead, what I believe now is you now have some breathing room to make better decisions for your life that is going to lead you to having a higher baseline of happiness. This might come in many different forms for different people. It might mean spending significantly more time in social circles. It might mean spending a lot more time pursuing hobbies. It might mean spending a lot more time traveling, or it could even mean just finding a new job, finding something that you are more passionate about, something that you're gonna have a lot more fulfillment in. And now if you are personally ready to get started on the path of financial independence, Boy, do I have the video for you, okay? I have a complete guide to getting started. Even if you have already gotten started, if you haven't watched this video, you definitely need to watch it, okay? It's gonna pop up right on the screen right after I get off the screen. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'm Zach from uncashflow.com, and I hope to see you next time. That you're usually going to have, uh, that you're usually, the, that I strongly believe, or,